Hi, good morning. I'm Emile Glorieux, and uh, so I'm uh, going to present on Pharma 4.0. I'm with the Manufacturing Technology Centre, the MTC, which is uh, based here in, uh, which is based in the UK. Uh, offices in Coventry and Liverpool, and office and and Oxford. And uh, so, as an RTO, uh, we're looking at closing the Valley of Death, of you know, bringing innovations and technologies from you know academic environments and universities into um, you know uh, mature them so they're ready to be adopted in industry. And we work across you know manufacturing uh, sectors and across the all uh, range of manufacturing applications. Uh, this includes uh, digital engineering, and as a digital, digital engineering department, we've been looking at you know, digital twin technologies and applications and, and case studies uh, to um, yeah, mature and uh, make, uh, make uh, these technologies ready for adoption in, in, in manufacturing. And for today, I'll be presenting a specific uh, work we've done on digital twins for pharmaceutical uh, applications for Pharma 4.0. So with Pharma 4.0, we mean um, sort of the version of Industry 4.0, but then tailored for um, pharmaceutical industry pharma uh, applications. And uh, so looking at connecting data and digital integration to enable new products, enable new services and and set up new um, yeah, new business models uh, supported by you know, technology and data and automation uh, to enhance customer value. So for us during this work, we identify sort of three pillars around Pharma 4.0. So one's around automation, having automated changeovers, automated processes, having digitally integrated data, connectivity between supply chain, your environment, customers, product quality. And that then feeds into the, the tech side, having advanced analytics, advanced visualization, and, and then ultimately having that all connected into a digital to an application. And that together brings the the, the cyber physical connected uh, ecosystem to for pharma 4.0 applications. So we looked specifically on the packaging of pharmaceutical tablets for this for this use case to demonstrate these technologies um, and at the application of having com compliance packaging, so having different types of tablets packed in you know the same blisters organized for you know per day or per meal or per week uh, to uh, enhance sort of the customer value make reduce errors uh, when uh, patients take medication and deliver that in small batches tailored to the customer needs rapidly adapting to uh, changing requirements we've done a range of of uh, different activities uh, including designing a bespoke manufacturing system, having fully digitally integrated work in instructions, quality insurance, product traceability, and specifically also a process digital twin, which will be the focus of this, uh, uh, this presentation. Uh, but the, the wider use case is actually on show in our office in Liverpool. So if anyone is interested, please contact us and we can arrange a visit. Um, so this is an example or an overview of, of the, the, the specific production system we're looking at. So we've designed a compact packing line where blisters are being fed in. They are uh, so in this, uh, they are formed. Uh, so to have the, the cavities, uh, then the blisters are filled with tablets. Then they are sealed, printed, and cut so they can ready to go into cardboard uh, uh, cartons. And the challenge is that because we are, uh, we have developed this sort of compact production system uh, was around the cooling time. So we have to make sure that when the blisters are being formed, as they're being heated up, they, they cool down enough by the time they reach the um, filling station, because some tablets are not, uh, cannot be exposed to um, large temperatures or high temperatures because otherwise they'll start sticking to the blister material or some of the ingredients may be affected. And because we're, we're looking at a compliance packaging application, we need this control system and the insurance to be very flexible so it can be easily adapted for new products, new blister materials, new tablets, um, and arranging um, um, 
operating conditions, such as specifically the room temperature. So we started up with running a lot of different simulations on, on the production system, but also on the thermodynamics of the blisters, uh, how they are formed, how they are cooled. And by exploring the design, by exploring the operating conditions, by exploring the different materials, we've collected a lot of data that we, we sort of stored uh, to have a large data set of all the range of, um, of operating conditions uh, and um, sampled so that we can make a uh, response surface model that gives us an, a, a quick executable um, model to uh, determine what are the right operating conditions to protect the, the tablets from being uh, exposed to um, uh, large temperatures. And then alongside that, we then developed a digital architecture to have live data coming from the line and from you know, temperature, the, the feeding rate of the blister material, the, the forming temperature. So we get live data into the digital twin that is then fed into the, the, the response surface model that we've developed based, based on the simulation data to then determine do we need to slow down the line? Do we switch? Do we need to switch? Do the system needs to switch on the cooling fan in order to avoid the temperature being too high? Or uh, so, and that way, it can have a closed loop control system with the digital twin. And the reason why we want to have this as a part of a digital twin is to um, have it easily updated and upgraded as the line evolves if we if new products or new um, um uh, yeah new blister materials used or new tablets are, are being used having that part as a digital twin it can easily be connected to other systems and it's uh, yeah helps with the rapid adaptiveness of, of the line and additionally we we've developed and tested and debugged the whole digital uh, integration and architecture using a virtual environment. So initially we uh, we developed digital twin, the model, the data integration with a virtual replica of the line that connected through the same um, digital thread. So we had the digital twin developed, debugged before we even bought the equipment and we were very confident that it worked. And Additionally, we've also made sure that the digital twin fully integrates with other digital systems, such as uh, the manufacturing MES, uh, manufacturing execution system. So as an operator on the line interacts with the digital twin, he's in a way barely aware of what goes on. It, it's the digital twin sits at the back end and is fully integrated and it just brings the right information in the right format to the right people to make the decision whether or not to re you know reduce the speed or increase the 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 fan or and so production can run as normal and it it helps with the trust worthiness of the digital twin overall if it's fully integrated and then when the system that we built arrived in 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 uh, um in our lab in, in Liverpool, uh, we were already very confident that the digital twin works. Uh, it's been debugged, it's been tested for a wide range of scenarios. So then we could go from having the digital twin connected with the simulation, just switch it over to being connected with the actual manufacturing systems. There were a very few number of commissioning tests and then um, we, yeah, everything worked as it should and as expected and uh, it, helps uh, helped a lot to to reduce the commissioning time um, so overall the digital twin can ensure product quality can eliminate unnecessary delays to heat or to cool uh, the to pr the processes it helps to to um, to um, assure quality in a much cheaper and, and faster way and, uh, and it actually also provides additional insights on the temperature for each blister that has been packed. And because of the way it's been tested and integrated, it's easy to, to, to add it to existing systems, but also to have it uh, added to a, a legacy, a piece of legacy equipment. And overall, the, 
or lessons learned through doing this is this digital first approach for digital twins where you first develop a digital twin in a virtual environment and test it in a virtual environment is highly beneficial to de-risk the investment to to, to also sort of flesh out the, the business case and understand the, how much cost and how much effort it and it will need to be main, to maintain it but also to adopt it and uh, uh, to test it uh, to uh, commission it it goes a lot faster when you have the digital environment where you can test uh, where you can develop the digital twin and it it helps towards sort of right first time implementation because you can do a lot of the testing and development in parallel and um, the second lesson learned is that this digital first approach for the digital twin helps with allowing the digital twin to evolve as the system or the organization evolves in new products or new processes or there's um, other updates are being done having the digital twin and in in in, uh, in this virtual environment you have a sand pit where you can um, do more tests in parallel with the operating uh, version and then uh, deploy it much quicker and do more continuous improvement and we've seen that that uh, brings in an additional level of maturity to the digital twin and the system we, we're proposing and to have it uh, evolve over its lifetime and with the organization so thank you very much for your attention how have you met the requirements the regulatory authorities regarding safety, quality, etc. So yeah, we've been working uh, with um, integrators who have uh, experience with the, the pharma soft, uh, pharma um, uh, industry to uh, to work on what are the requirements for software. However, we do are an RTO, so we we're not diving into all the 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 nitty gritty of of this. We're we're looking more to demonstrate the art of the possible and the state of the art. How can you ensure cybersecurity in digital twins? What if attackers use attack vectors in the virtual twin to assess and then impact the physical twin? So there, again, our lessons learned to, to use this virtual sandpit digital first approach allows you to assess the impact of a sensor or a controller or, or certain signal being hacked and see what simulate and anticipate for what what the risks are and and allows you to make informed decision on how to to implement cyber security measures more informed making more, more informed decisions on on having that extra insight by by simulating a potential attack or a potential hack uh, through the simulation gives you that foresight thank you and the next two middle questions are for yourself. Um, I'm going to ask them broadly both together as they're quite linked. Is the first one here in purple is how is uncertainty, if it's quantified, between the simulation model data and the real machine data managed in real time? And the linked question is any comments on the digital validation and verification aspects? Mm -hmm. So uh, indeed the 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 surrogate model and uh, what we're using in the digital twin is, is less accurate and has more uncertainty than a uh, detailed physics or um, discrete event simulation model. However, it, it, it's in it's a trade-off between how many runs and data you you gather in, in advance and how accurate the, the measurements need to be, and it's working back from the amount of uncertainty you you can have in terms of you know product quality in this case and then working it back to the sensor data and and the accuracy of the models and uh, yeah making a decision in, in in that way and managing in real time is then working with the integrator and the sensor provider how many data points you can collect in a certain time frame and then doing the data analytics to get a reliable uh, data point 